Welcome. It's Mr. Hyper taking you through the second application of distribution law. And this time around, we are looking at investigation of complex ions. Now, why I want you to know, I want you to know that many ions undergo complexation, right? Uh, when a ligand substance is added to their aqueous solutions. And uh, in this case, the formula of the formed complex and hence the number of ligand molecules, which we shall be calling N, those ligand molecules are coordinated to the central metal ion can be determined by application of the partition law. For example, if you consider a metal cation copper undergoing complexation with any number of ammonium, ammonium molecules, we form a complex So that is what we are trying to say. Many ions undergo complexation when a ligand substance is added to the aqueous solution. This is an aqueous solution of copper. You're adding a ligand substance, which is the ammonia molecule, all right? So uh, what we form, we form a formula of a complex, all right? So we can determine the formula of a complex and the number of ligand molecules, right? And that way, we can go ahead and uh, look at um, how we can get, we shall be looking at how to get the number of ligands in, how to deduce the formulas of these complexes, right? And, uh, and many other calculations as we shall see. So when we say a ligand, we are looking at an ion, a ligand can be an ion, a ligand can be a molecule that is attached to the metal atom by coordinate bonding right? Or it can be a molecule that binds another, that is biochemistry. So we are looking at, in coordination chemistry, we are looking at an ion molecule that binds to a central atom to form a coordination complex. So what you form here is what we call a coordination complex, all right? So this, uh, this bonding with a metal involves generally the formal donation of one or more of the ligands, electron pairs, which can often go through, uh, uh, which can as uh, uh, which can be um, attributed to Lewis bases and etc. But uh, without taking you very far, just you know, it can be a molecule and ion coordinated to a metal. Okay to form a coordination complex. So what we form there is what we call a coordination complex. Now, uh, determining the number of moles in these N moles of ammonia combining with one mole of copper, two ions, cannot be done by direct titration. You may not titrate copper and ammonia direct to get the number of moles N, all right? Because, the acid, the acid may, add, uh, may react with the ammonia that is in the complex, as well as the free ammonia. So we cannot do direct titration to determine the value of N, simply because to titrate we shall be need, since we have a base here, shall be needing a standard acid. And that standard acid is going to react with free ammonia. At the same time, we react with the ammonia uh, in the complex. And therefore, what we do, we bring in an organic solvent. We add an organic solvent to the aqueous solution, all right? Then the complex ion formed does not react with that organic solvent. So we've seen that direct titration cannot be used to determine the value of N, but if we add if we add an organic solvent to the aqueous solution, the fact that the complex form doesn't react or doesn't dissolve in the organic solvent, then we can easily determine this number of moles, okay? In other words, what happens is, 
Uh, the free ammonia is the one, or the free ammonia molecules are the ones which get partitioned between the aqueous layer and organic layer. And therefore, the total concentration of ammonia in the aqueous layer will be consisting of the complex ammonia and the free ammonia. All right, so um, those are the details that we are going to be looking at in this uh, very particular case. And to understand it better is when we carry out an experiment, okay? Is when we carry out an experiment, All right? Okay, so now um, allow me to take you direct to that experiment that leads us to determination. Of the formula. of a complex formed between copper two ions and ammonia and that complex is Cu. NH3, yeah, we have N, then two plus. But we can determine the formula by getting the value of, by getting the value of N. So let's see how we determine this formula. One can present this uh, work in different methods, but I'm going to also have my own presentation. Then at the end of it all, we shall have to come up with a clear and common understanding. So we have what procedures that we do follow, okay? And uh, the first procedure is we get excess aqueous ammonia excess aqueous ammonia is added to a solution of copper of copper two sulfate, which has copper two ions, of copper two sulfate of a known concentration in a separating funnel. After adding excess aqueous ammonia to copper two sulfate, in other words, you've added ammonia solution to copper two ions, right? Then we have to add an organic solvent. So an equal volume, of trichloromethane is added to the solution in the funnel. You add an organic solvent, which is trichloromethane. You, say, you shake the mixture, shake the mixture, so the mixture is shaking. And allowed to settle at a constant temperature for temperature uh, for equilibrium to be established.
and this one causes the layers to separate as layers do separate. Now, after these layers have separated, they are removed from the funnel. They are removed from the funnel. And we pick a known volume. So a known volume of the organic layer is pipetted is pipetted and titrated with the standard hydrochloric acid okay using methyl orange indicator using methyl orange indicator and this one leads us to determine the concentration of ammonia in the organic layer So the first thing is to get the concentration of ammonia in the organic layer, all right? Now, after getting the concentration of ammonia in the organic layer, remember we've been knowing the value of KD, or partition coefficient. So from known value of partition coefficient, I can write the word partition coefficient, let me use KD, of ammonia between water and tetrachloromethane, eh? between water and trichloromethane, and trichloromethane, we shall get the concentration the concentration of free ammonia in the aqueous layer is got from, by knowing the KD, we shall get the concentration of free ammonia in aqueous layer. And that one is equal to KD is equal to concentration of ammonia, free ammonia, out of concentration of ammonia in the organic layer. So this expression gives us the concentration of free ammonia, which will be KD times the concentration of ammonia in the organic. Which concentration of ammonia in the organic we've gotten from this step two. After removing the the layers, we prepared a known volume of organic. We treated it against hydrochloric acid. We determined the concentration of ammonia in the organic layer. And there we can proceed when we know the KD, we get the uh, concentration of free ammonia. After getting concentration of free ammonia, now we go ahead. Remember, we've gotten the concentration of ammonia in the organic layer, but we need uh, also to work on the aqueous layer. So what we do, we pick a fixed volume of aqueous layer. We shall pick a fixed volume of aqueous layer and we also pipette it. We also pipette it. So it's also pipetted and titrated with, and titrated with the standard hydrochloric acid with standard hydrochloric acid using methyl orange indicator 
using methyl orange indicator. Now, when we do this, we get the total concentration. Okay, this gives this gives the total concentration. Okay, of both complex of both complex and uncomplex, both complex and uncomplex ammonia in the aqueous layer. Ammonia in aqueous layer, right? When we pipette uh, a portion of the aqueous layer with the standard hydrochloric acid, what we shall get will be the total concentration of both complex and uncomplex ammonia. Then if we are to get the concentration of complex ammonia, because we want to know the concentration of ammonia that goes in to form a complex. So we are going to continue and say uh, the concentration, the concentration of complex ammonia, of complex ammonia is obtained from this expression is obtained from concentration of complex ammonia and that is equal to to get complex ammonia we get total ammonia in the aqueous so ammonia total minus concentration of free ammonia. That one, give us, that one gives us the complex ammonia. Then the final step, after having gotten the complex ammonia, then the final step will be the number of the molecules, now the other value of N, the number of molecules of ammonia, Combining with combining with the copper two ions, combining with copper two ions to form a complex, uh, to form a complex, right, will be obtained from. The ratio obtained from the ratio of concentration of complex ammonia to that of copper two ions, to that of copper two ions. So we shall have it as the value of N equaling it to concentration of the complex ammonia divided by the concentration of copper to ions. And this one will be giving us the value of N. So a question can come, a question can come when they specify for you to explain or to describe an experiment or to describe how the formula of a complex formed between copper to ions and ammonia can be determined. So you have to move up to this very point or this very step. How do you begin? You begin by bringing copper, if I'm summarize it here, you begin by bringing copper, okay, copper solution, any, any solution of copper, if you are told to if it is specified for you like copper two ions, you have to move with that. So we shall have copper two ions, maybe. We add aqueous ammonia. But because this one is not enough, reason when you're titrating directly with this, the hydrochloric acid will react with the ammonia, with this free ammonia and the ammonia in the complex. And therefore, you have to bring in an organic layer or an organic solvent. And that's why we are considering trichromethane. So when you mix these two, the concentration of ammonia should be known, right? 
the concentration of ammonia should be known and that the volume should be equal to the volume of this solvent that you're adding. Now, after these three being mixed in a certain separating funnel, okay, uh, you have to shake until equilibrium is reached. How do you know that equilibrium is reached? You will see layers forming separate. Because being a separating funnel, it means that uh, these liquids are going to be uh, uh, to be form separate layers, which which are going to be indicated by a junction. Now, after those liquid, after those separate layers formed, you will pipette a known volume of an organic layer, and it treat. Remember, there is um, ammonia has distributed itself in the organic layer and the aqueous layer. So first, pick the organic layer, a known form of organic layer, pipette it and titrate it against standard hydrochloric acid using methyl orange indicator. That one will lead you to get the concentration of, uh, uh, it's going to, to get you the concentration of ammonia in the organic solvent or in the organic layer. After having gotten the concentration of ammonia in the organic, remember some other ammonia disappeared itself in the aqueous. So let's first work on the organic. After getting the concentration of uh, ammonia in the organic, we say that having known the value of KD, you can use that very concentration to determine the value of free ammonia, the concentration of free ammonia. And to get concentration of free ammonia, we say that KD is equal to concentration of free ammonia out of concentration of ammonia in the organic layer. So by cross multiplying, you get the concentration of free ammonia as KD times the concentration of organic layer. Then after getting that concentration of free ammonia, Okay, now you also prepared a known volume of the aqueous layer. And that volume of aqueous layer after being titrated with the standard hydrochloric acid using methyl orange indicator, you're going to get the total uh, ammonia in aqueous layer, which is, uh, which is a complex ammonia. Or rather, so, no, 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 sorry. You are going to get the total ammonia in the aqueous layer. After having gotten the total ammonia in the aqueous layer, that one will be consisting of both complex and uncomplex. But for us, we are interested in the complex ammonia or the ammonia that goes to form a complex. And therefore, what we do, uh, uh, what we shall do after having gotten the, the, the complex, the total ammonia, we just go and now use it to get the complex ammonia, whereby we said that the complex ammonia is the concentration, okay? Complex ammonia is given by the concentration of, sorry, 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 sorry. We've said that the complex ammonia is gotten by getting the total ammonia in the aqueous layer. We subtract the concentration of, uh, we subtract the concentration uh, of ammonia. We subtract the concentration of ammonia in, uh, subtract the concentration of ammonia which was free, free ammonia, okay? As this, complex ammonia is total ammonia in aqueous minus free ammonia. After having carried this, after getting the concentration of ammonia that goes to form a complex, then we can get the ligand, the number of ligands. So the number of molecules of ammonia that combine with, uh, uh, with the copper two ions to form a coordination complex, okay? And that is given by the concentration of ammonia in which was complex out of the total concentration of copper. So we are going to look at the questions. This is the most amazing part. So you're going to look at the guiding questions that are going to help us understand this concept very, 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 very clearly, very clearly. So I'm going to do very many questions, but uh, to begin with, uh, to begin with, let me just first do one, then we shall do many more examples in the other or in another video. So let me uh, do one example to clarify this. Example. One, excess ammonia. Okay, excess ammonia was shaken with equal volume of trichloromethane. Allow me write 
a formula of trichloromethane and uh, a 0 0.05 molar aqueous solution of copper two sulfate and allowed it to stand. Some ammonia reacted with uh, copper two ions to form a complex. And that complex has been given as Cu NH3N two plus at equilibrium. The concentrations of ammonia in trichloromethane and aqueous layers were 0 0.021 molar and 0 0.7 to five molar respectively. Respectively, all right? They have given us KD KD for ammonia between water And tetrachloromethane and trichloro, sorry, and trichloromethane as twenty-five. A calculate the concentration of Roman one free ammonia. in in aqueous layer roman 2 ammonia that formed a complex with the copper two ions and the uh, part b determine the value of N in the complex. Very interesting question. And since we've carried out an experiment by following the flow of an experiment, we can be safe. Solution part one, concentration of free ammonia. We've said that that one is gotten from KD, which is the concentration of ammonia free over the concentration of ammonia that goes to organic layer. Meaning that concentration of ammonia free, of free ammonia is equals to KD times concentration of ammonia in the organic. So this is going to be equal to KD has been given as 25, and they've also uh, given us the concentrations of uh, ammonia in, tetra in trichromethane and aqueous as this. So for organic layer is 0 0.021. And this is going to give us 0 0.525 molar. Roman two, they want us to get complexed ammonia, the ammonia that formed a complex, that is complexed ammonia. So complexed ammonia, we get it by getting the concentration of total ammonia in aqueous. We subtract 
concentration of free ammonia. So aqueous total is 0 0.725 and free ammonia has been gotten as 0 0.525. So this gives us 0 0.2 molar. Part B wants us to get the value of N. We say that to get value of N, we simply get the complex ammonia, we divide it by the concentration of copper. So uh, complex ammonia out of the concentration of copper. So it is going to be complex, that is 0 0.2 over the concentration of copper. They say that excess ammonia was shaken with equal volume of trichromethane and 0 0.05 up here solution of copper to sulfate. Now, if this is a solution of copper two sulfate, then the copper two ions in this solution have got this uh, concentration. So uh, we are going to divide it by 0 0.05. And it's going to give us a four. So the value of N is four, meaning that the formula of a complex, if you are told to deduce the formula of a complex, you would say Cu, NH34, two plus, okay? So that is what we are having. Logics, or oh, someone after reaching here to get the value of N, one can say 0 0.05 moles of copper two ions complex with a 0 0.2 moles of ammonia. What about one mole of copper two ions? Still, you get the value of N, as for. So in our next video, we are going to record uh, other more examples uh, and even some graphical number, and then we call it a lesson. See there.